डियर स्टूडेंट सलाम अलैकुम टुडे वी शेल डू टॉपिक थर्टीन इंटीग्रेशन बाय पार्शियल फ्रैक्शंस दिस इज पार्ट ऑफ कैलकुलस टू मैट टू हंड्रेड लेट्स रिकॉल द टू टर्म फैक्टराइजेशन एक्स स्क्वायर माइनस ए स्क्वायर इक्वल टू एक्स माइनस ए इंटू एक्स प्लस ए एंड द थ्री टर्म फैक्ट्राइजेशन एक्स स्क्वायर प्लस ए प्लस बी एक्स प्लस ए बी इक्वल टू एक्स प्लस ए इंटू एक्स प्लस बी If the factors are not given in the question, then we we'll shall use these factorization formula to get the factors. And sometimes we cannot factorize directly; we need to the help of the quadratic equation formula, which is given over here. We shall not get into these details because these we have seen in other chapters and other videos. Now, what is a linear factor? The linear factor is your straight line a x plus b, m x plus c. The power of x has to be one, and there can be any two real numbers here. But the power of x has to be one, so we call it as a linear factor. Now, there are different scenarios which are arising in this topic. Now, let's look at the first. Expression f of x divided by x plus a into x plus b. In the denominator, we have two linear factors. If we multiply them, we'll get a quadratic power two function expression. So what's the rule? The function f of x should have one degree lower. So this is power two. So this has to be power one, and power one is linear. Here also, x plus a into x plus a equal to x plus a whole square. This is quadratic, which is power two, so this has to be power one, which we call as linear. Now, what's the difference between the first and the second? In the first, the factors are not repeating. A is not equal to B. I have not written it here, but it is implied. I'll write it here sometime in the notes. So, the factors are non-repeating. X plus A is one factor. X plus B is one factor. In the second case, x plus a is repeating. There are two factors, but they are repeating, so we put it as power two. So if it is non-repeating linear factors, then you put it as a divided by x plus a plus b divided by x plus b. So this will be equivalent to this, where capital A and capital B have to be calculated, and a and b, small a and small b, lower case a, lower case b are given in the question. This capital A and capital B have to be calculated. In the second case, the linear factor is repeating, so you will get a divided by x plus a plus b divided by x plus a whole square. So just note the difference between the first and the second, and the same idea follows in the third and the fourth. Here we have two non-repeating linear factors, x plus a and x plus b. Here we have one linear factor which is squared, and the structure of the partial fraction changes. Here we have three non-repeating linear factors, and we get a by the first. Linear factor plus b by the second plus c by the third linear factor, and this a, b, c have to be calculated. Here in the fourth case, it is repeating, and again the structure will be modification of the second. It is a by x plus a plus b by x plus a whole square plus b by x plus a whole cube. Now let's look at some numerical examples. Now what's the advantage? See, so far we have not seen this kind of integrands and once we have the two partial fractions we can integrate it using the logarithmic function in the first case in the second case we will be using the logarithm and the power rule and we shall see it in detail shortly now there are two relevant integration formula which we are there in this topic first one is 1 divided by ax plus or minus b dx This a and b are some real numbers, and the rule will be one over a logarithm natural modulus absolute value, not modulus absolute value a x plus or minus b plus the capital C the constant of integrals. Now, this can be done by substitution. We have seen it before, but let's recall it. U equal to a x plus or minus b. The derivative of a x is a. 
and derivative of b being a number is 0 so it doesn't matter whether it, it is plus 0 or minus 0 so du equal to a dx dx equal to 1 over a du now let's integrate it here 1 over ax plus or minus b will be equal to 1 over u as we have chosen to substitute and dx equal to 1 over a du 1 over a being a number comes out so you have to integrate 1 over u and the integration of 1 over u is logarithm natural absolute value u plus c now how much is u get back the re reverse the substitution you get 1 over a equal to logarithm natural magnitude a x plus or minus b absolute value x not magnitude plus now this kind of integration we have done numerically without using a and b now today we are writing the same formula in generality using a and b a and b can be any numbers we did this before by when we had some specific values of a and b now let's look at derivation of the second formula integration of 1 over ax plus or minus b whole square dx equal to minus 1 over a into ax plus or minus b plus c now how do you get it put u equal to ax plus or minus b du equal to a dx dx equal to 1 over a du now 1 over bracket square will become 1 over u square and dx is 1 over a du 1 over a will come out you get 1 over u square now integration of 1 over u square is u power minus 2 we will get u power minus 2 plus 1 the whole divided by minus 2 plus 1 you get u power minus 1 divided by minus 1 you get minus 1 over a 1 over u this is equal to minus 1 minus into a fraction 1 over a u now a is how much a is a number any real number what about u u is equal to ax plus or minus b plus c is to be added in the last stage you can do this for any power i have shown it to you for power 2 and i have shown it to you for power sorry minus 2 here the power is minus 2 and here the power is minus 1 when it is u power minus 1 you have to use the logarithmic system and a cannot be 0 if a is 0 then you can directly integrate this is a number now let's look at the partial fraction write the partial fraction decomposition of the following expression this is the standard english used for this process this is called partial fraction decomposition of what 5x minus 4 divided by x minus 2 bracket into bracket x plus 1 now from the table which we have on page 1 the factors are not repeating so it will be a divided by first factor plus b divided by second linear factor both are linear factors and they are not repeating now we have to somehow calculate the values of a and b there are several procedures and i shall show you one procedure which is probably the easiest now take we are assuming the partial fraction to have this form and the values of capital a and capital b have to be found now multiply both the left and the right side with the product of the two factors which are x minus 2 x plus 1 now on the left hand side both the factors will cancel you will be left with 5 x minus 4 on the right hand side when you multiply in the first instance the x minus 2 will get cancelled you will be left with x plus 1 in the second case x plus 1 will get cancelled you will be left with x minus 2 so consequently 5 x minus 4 equal to a into x plus 1 plus b into x minus 2 now from this stage now we have to choose some value of x such that the term containing a gets removed the mathematical word is eliminated eliminated means to remove in simple english now you solve the equation x plus 1 equal to 0 and the answer is minus 1 and the solutions to equations are called roots so the root is minus 1 so you can put x equal to minus 1 take back go back to your parent equation 5x minus 4 equal to a into x plus 1 plus b into x minus 2. put x equal to minus 1 a into minus 1 plus 1 is 0 a into 0 is 0 so the term a has been eliminated from the equation now what happens to the rest of the expression 
equation actually. Uh, x is equal to minus 1, 5 into minus 1, minus 4, you'll get minus 5, minus 4, minus 9 on the left. On the right, the a is gone. Now you're left with b into x minus 2. x equal to minus 1, minus 1, minus 2 is minus 3. You'll get minus 3. b equal to minus 9 divided by minus 3, which is equal to 3. Now, root of x minus 2 equal to 0. Now, next, now, first time we eliminated A, next time we have to eliminate B. If you eliminate A, you get the value of B. If you eliminate B, you get the value of A. You can do it in any order. It really does not matter. Now, let's look at our parent equation. You have x minus 2 in it. Now, solve this x minus 2 equal to 0. The solution is plus 2. We call it a root because it is a solution of an equation. So put x equal to 2, then you will get b into 2 minus 2 is 0, so the b term is eliminated. Now let's look at the left side. 5x minus 4, 5 into 2 minus 4 is 10, mi 10 minus 4, which is 6. Now a into 2 plus 1 is 3, which is 3a, 6 equal to 3a, a equal to 6 divided by 3 equal to 2. So now we are ready, we have the value of the b and the value of the a. What was the thing? We had assumed the two partial fractions to be a by x minus 2 plus b by x plus 1, a equal to 2, b equal to 3. So your partial fractions are 2 by x minus 2 plus 3 by x plus 1, finally. Now let's check the solution. To check the solution, we'll note down the general formula for adding two fractions a by b plus or minus c by d equal to a into d plus or minus b into c divided by b into d. We don't have to write the crosses all, all the time. We can just say a d plus or minus b c divided by b d. Now take, let's look at our two partial fractions 2 divided by x minus 2 plus 3 divided by x plus 1. Now cross multiply as shown in this formula you get 2 into x plus 1 plus 3 into x minus 2 divided by x minus 2 into x plus 1. Now open the two brackets in the numerator. Do not touch the brackets in the denominator. We do not need it because they are part of the question. Now it is 2x plus 2 plus 3x minus 6 which is 5x minus 4 divided by x minus 2 into x plus 1 which is same as the question. So it's good to verify the partial fractions and sometimes we can even guess what the partial fractions are subconsciously. Now let's do another example. Write the partial fraction decomposition of the following expression 2x plus 5 divided by x plus 2 into x plus 4. Now we have two linear factors which are not repeating. x plus 2 is different from x plus 4. Nothing is repeating. So we have to write a divided by x plus 2 plus b divided by x plus 4. Now when you multiply on the left and the right with x plus 2 into x plus 4, you will get 2x plus 5 equal to a into x plus 4 plus b into x plus 2, 4, x plus 2. Now, again, we have to eliminate a or the b. Let's eliminate a, b this time. So, let's go to the second part directly. Put x equal to minus 2. How do you get minus 2? Solve x plus 2 equal to 0. You'll get x equal to minus 2 as the root. Put it there. You'll get b into minus 2 plus 2, which is b into 0 equal to 0. Then on the left hand side, we have 2 into minus 2, 2x plus 5, 2 into minus 2 plus 5, which is minus 4 plus 5 equal to 1. Now let's look at on the right hand side, a into x plus 4, the b is already gone. We have a into minus 2 plus 4, we'll get a into 2, which is 2a, 1 equal to 2a, a equal to half. So we eliminated b and calculated a, the order is not important, now let's eliminate a and calculate b. What's the equation? a into x plus 4. So this x plus 4 has to be made 0. So x plus 4 equal to 0. That means x equal to minus 4 as the root. So put x equal to minus 4. In the full expression, 2 into minus 4 plus 5 is minus 8 plus 5 which is minus 3. Now, a is eliminated because a into minus 4 plus 4 is a into 0 which is 0. So by construction a is eliminated. There is no need to write so much. You can directly write the 0. Now plus b into x plus 2 minus 4 plus 2 is minus 2. So you have minus 2b on the right. 
So B equal to minus 3 divided by minus 2 which is 3 by 2. Do not write 1.5, you have to write it as 3 by 2. Now finally we have the partial fractions are for 2x plus 5 divided by x plus 2 into x plus 4 this is equal to half divided by x plus 2 plus 3 by 2 divided by x plus 4. Now take the 2 down, 2 down or put half, take care of the half, you will be left with 1 and 3. So you will get 1 divided by 2 into x plus 2, this bracket is important, plus 3 divided by 2 into x plus 4, even this bracket is important. Now take half common, it's better to take half common because we have to integrate in the in future about sometime we we'll need to integrate this expression so you we'll take half common 1 divided by x plus 2 plus 3 divided by x plus 4 in the last expression the bracket are, are not important you can again verify and do it you can keep these fractions here and remove them i mean take care of them at the time of integration but it's better to do it in this case we can do it now also now, uh, example number 3, write the partial fraction decomposition of the following expression, 20x plus 35 divided by x plus 4 whole square. Now, from the table we know that it is repeating, so the structure is a divided by x plus 4 plus b divided by x plus 4 whole square. Now, multiply with x plus 4 whole square on the, both the sides. This on the left hand side the x plus 4 whole square will get cancelled you will be left with 20 x plus 35 on the right hand side in the case of a 1 x plus 4 will get cancelled the second will remain so you will get a into x plus 4 in the case of b x plus 4 whole square will cancel completely you will have b alone with no coefficient there now here we don't have any choice we have to eliminate a because b cannot be eliminated directly because there is a no coefficient with b actually b cannot be eliminated at all now we can only eliminate a and calculate the b now root of x plus 4 equal to 0 is minus 4 so now let's just put x equal to minus 4 20x plus 35 equal to a into x plus 4 plus b now put x equal to minus 4, 20 into minus 4 is minus 80 plus 35 is minus 45. Now a into minus 4 plus 4 is a into 0 which is equal to 0. See we had decided to eliminate a so we chose x equal to minus 4 so you can write this 0 directly. Now 0 plus b equal to b minus 45 equal to b, b equal to minus 45. Now next. After we have found the value of b, your equation is 20x plus 35 equal to a into x plus 4 plus b. Now put b equal to minus 45. So plus into minus is minus. So look at the second line. You have 20x plus 35 equal to a into x plus 4 minus 45. Now what should we do now? Now if you eliminate a, nothing will happen. You will get minus 45 equal to minus 45. So it's not a new information. So you give some simple value to x. One possible simple value is x equal to 0. So you put 20x plus 35, 20 into 0 plus 35 is 0 plus 35 equal to 35 on the left. On the right hand side it is a into 0 plus 4 which is equal to 4a minus 45. You have 35 equal to 4a minus 45 a equal to 35 plus 45 by 4 which is 80 by 4 which is equal to 20. So there is nothing special about x equal to 0. You can also put x equal to 1 or 2 or 3 or your phone number or card number. All numbers will work. But we normally go for an easy simple number which is there. But you cannot choose minus 4 because if you choose minus 4 you will get minus 45 equal to minus 45 which is which we know without doing anything minus 2 equal to minus 2. You will not get any new information so do not put minus 4 put any other number because minus 4 has been used here. So finally your partial fractions are 20 divided by x plus 4 minus 45 divided by x plus 4 whole square which you can write it as 20 divided by x plus 4 minus 45 divided by x plus 4 whole square. Again you can check the answer by summing the two partial fractions on the right hand side. 
now finally we are going to start the integration so far we were dealing how to find the partial fractions now we know how to find the partial fractions so let's do it evaluate the integral 11x plus 4, 17 divided by x minus 3 into x plus 7 now what we have here now the two factors are x minus 3 and x plus 7 they are different they are not repeating so the structure is a divided by x minus 3 plus b divided by x plus 7 you, it cannot have any other structure now multiply with the two factors on the left and the right which are x minus 3 and x plus 7 so you will get 11 x plus 7 equal to a into x plus 7 plus b into x minus 3 now again i am not going to write much english this time put x equal to minus 7 to eliminate a you will get this stage now with minus 7 11 look let's look at the left side 11 into minus 7 is minus 77 plus 17 is equal to minus 60 on the right hand side you have minus 7 plus 7 equal to 0 a into 0 is 0 a has been eliminated and b into x minus 3 b into minus 7 minus 3 is minus 10 b so you have minus 60 equal to minus 10 b b equal to minus 60 divided by minus 10 which is equal to 6. now put x equal to 3 in the in order to eliminate b and calculate a because it is b into x minus 3 if you put plus 3 minus 3 is equal to 0 so b is eliminated no need to write 0 here this time i'll have written 1 0 less on the left hand side you have 11 x plus 17 11 into 3 plus 17 33 plus 17 is 50 and on the right hand side you have a into x plus 7 the b has been eliminated 3 x equal to 3 3 plus 7 is 10 so you have 10 a on the right hand side 50 equal to 10 a a equal to 50 divided by 10 equal to 5 so now we have obtained the partial fractions for the expression we have which is the integrand which and we obtain 5 by x minus 3 plus 6 divided by x plus 7 now let's do, look at the integration now put back your original question the integrand is equal to sum of these two partial fractions now if you have two things in the integral you normally do it one at a time most of the time this idea works but sometimes we have to combine both but in this case we don't have to combine we have to do them separately now you have integration of 5 over x minus 3 plus integration of 6 over x plus 7 the 5 comes out and the 6 comes out you have 5 integral 1 over x minus 3 plus 6 times integral 1 over x plus 7 now, as we have seen in the derivation of the two integration formulae when we integrate this it will be logarithm natural absolute value x minus 3 and log logarithm natural absolute value x plus 7 now for as a reminder the formula is written here integration of 1 over ax plus or minus b dx equal to 1 over a ln ax plus or minus b in both the cases a is equal to 1 and in first case x b equal to minus 3 and in second case b equal to plus 7 so the, it takes this formula works for both plus and minus b so your integral integral after integration you will get 5 ln x minus 3 with the absolute value plus 6 ln absolute value x plus 7 plus c See, we can use the properties of logarithms and get a new expression, but we shall not do it today. We do not have any necessity to do it. But in some chapters, sometimes we have to combine and we will think about it and look into it when the time comes. Now, problem 2. Evaluate integral 7x minus 2 divided by x minus 2 into x minus 5. Now x minus 2 and x minus 5 are two different factors nothing is repeating so we write a divided by x minus 2 plus b over x minus 5. Again we multiply with the two factors and get the equation it is 7x minus 2 equal to a into x minus 5 plus b into x minus 5. Now again in, or, in order to eliminate a we put x equal to 5 
and in order to eliminate b we have to put x equal to 2 so now let's start with the elimination of a put x equal to 5 a is eliminated b into 5 minus 2 is 3b it's written here and on the left hand side we have 7 into 5 minus 2 which is 35 minus 2 equal to 33 b equal to 33 by 3 equal to 11. Now in the second case let's use the value x equal to 2 to eliminate b so b into 2 minus 2 is b into 0 which is 0. Now let's look at the part of a a into x minus 5 is a into 2 minus 5 which is minus 3 so you'll get minus 3a on the left hand side 7 into 2 minus 2 14 minus 2 equal to 12 a equal to 12 divided by minus 3 which is equal to minus 4 so finally the two partial fractions are minus 4 over x minus 2 plus 11 over x minus 5 now let's do the integration the integrand is converted into two partial fractions now the minus 4 and the plus 11 will come out and your first integration is minus 4 integral 1 over x minus 2 dx and the solution is minus 4 logarithm natural absolute value x minus 2. The second one is plus 11 logarithm natural absolute value x minus 5 plus c. Please copy the numbers very carefully. Do not interchange a and b. Just remember what is a and what is the value of b and continue. If you have any mistake in the partial fractions, your integration will also be wrong. So do it carefully. Now evaluate. So this question is similar to the last question. Now evaluate 4x minus 11 divided by x minus 3 into x minus 4. It is very similar but let's do it. Only the numbers have changed. The two factors are x minus 3 and x minus 4. They are two different factors. And so we have to use this structure of the partial fractions. We have a over x minus 3 plus b over x minus 4. See they are non-repeating linear factors. If they repeat then the structure changes. So the equation becomes 4x minus 11 equal to a into x minus 4 plus b into x minus 4. In the first case, in order to eliminate a, we put x equal to 4. So a into 4 minus 4 is a into 0. So you get 0. The a is gone. Now let's look at the right hand side. The remaining part of the right hand side. b into x minus 3. b into 4 minus 3 is b into 1 which is 1b which is equal to b. On the left hand side, 4x minus 11. 4 into 4 16 minus 11 is 15. So 16 minus 11 is 5. 5 equal to b. b equal to 5. Now we have eliminated a and found the value of b. Now let's eliminate b. Now let's look at the same equation again. The equation is not going to change. Put x equal to 3. b into 3 minus 3 is b into 0 which is 0. Now a into x minus 4. 3 minus 4 is minus 1. So you'll get minus a plus 0 which is minus a. This is on the right hand side. On the left hand side we have 4x minus 11, 4 into 3 12, 12 minus 11 is 1, 1 equal to minus a, a equal to minus 1. After we get the partial fractions as before we have to integrate the partial fractions are minus 1 over x minus 3 plus 5 over x minus 4. Now integrate, do the integration. Now we have the integration of the two partial fractions minus 1 over x minus 3 plus 5 over x minus 4. The minus 1 and the 5 will come out. No need to write 1 here. The sign minus is sufficient and integration of 1 over x minus 3 is logarithm natural x minus 3 with the absolute value. Here the 5 has come out. You have to integrate 1 over x minus 4. The answer is again logarithm natural absolute value x minus 4 with the 5 outside plus c. So integration is over here but normally we write, start an expression with a positive side, a positive sign. So we write 5 logarithm natural x minus 4 with the absolute value minus logarithm natural x minus 3 with the absolute value plus c. Yes, 1c is sufficient. There is no need to write plus plus again. Now we have used the same integration rule 1 over ax plus or minus b dx equal to 1 over a logarithm natural absolute value ax plus or minus b plus the integration constant capital C.
Now let's look at the one more question of the other type. Evaluate the integral 6x plus 7 over x plus 2 whole square. Now the factors are repeating, the linear factors are repeating. So we have to use a over x plus 2 plus b over x plus 2 whole square. This is the structure. Now multiply with x plus 2 whole square on both the sides, left and the right side. You will be left with an equation 6x plus 7 equal to a into x plus 2 plus b. See when you multiply here on the b part, the x plus 2 whole square will cancel and you will be left with b alone. In the case of a, it is a over x plus 2 multiplied with x plus 2 whole square. One power will cancel, one power will remain. One bracket will remain, so it is a into x plus 2. So your equation is 6x plus 7 equal to a into x plus 2 plus b. Now root of x plus 2 is equal to 0 is minus 2 root of x plus 2 equal to 0 is minus 2, so put x equal to minus 2. Then you will get 6x plus 7 equal to a into x plus 2 plus b. See, we cannot eliminate b in this case because b has no coefficient, so we have to eliminate a on d. Now, a into x plus 2, you have to put x equal to minus 2, minus 2 plus 2 is 0, a into 0 is 0, so the a, is, a has been elim eliminated. So on the right hand side you have 0 plus b equal to b. Let's look at on the left side. 6x plus 7, 6 into minus 2 plus 7, minus 12 plus 7 is minus 5. So minus 5 equal to b, b equal to minus 5. Now let's look at, try to find the value of a. Now again as we have seen before, 6x plus 7 equal to a into x plus 2 plus b value of b is minus 5. Now we cannot eliminate a here. If you eliminate a here, you will get minus 5 equal to minus 5, which is not a new information. So put some value of x, some easy value. So I prefer to again put 0. You can put 1 also if you wish. Again, you will get the, exactly the same value of a. It does not depend what value you choose here. Now, 6 into 0 plus 7 is 0 plus 7, so 7 on the left. On the right hand side, a will b is equal to minus 5, so a into 0 plus 2 is 2a minus 5. So 7 equal to 2a minus 5, take this minus 5 to the left, you will get 7 plus 5 divided by 2, which is 12 by 2 equal to 6. So the value of a is 6. Now let's look at the integration. Oh, so the partial fractions are 6 over x plus 2 and minus 5 over x plus 2 whole square. Now we can easily look at the integration. We have the first term is 6 over x plus 2. Do it. The 6 will come out. Integration of 1 over x plus 2 is logarithm natural x plus 2. And copy it in the next step. Now what happens to the second term? The minus 5 will come out, you will get 1 over x plus 2 whole square. Now we have to do the substitution. So you can do your substitution here or you can use the formula here. 1 over ax plus or minus b whole square equal to minus 1 over a into ax plus or minus b. So a equal to 1 and b equal to plus 2. So your answer is minus 1 over x plus 2. Look, there is a minus in the integration formula, 1 over x plus 2. The 5 is outside, so also the minus is there. Minus 5 is outside, minus 5 into minus 1 is plus. So your answer is plus 5 over x plus 2 plus c in the last step. Now let's look at one more question here so that things are easy. Evaluate the integral 3x minus 10 divided by x minus 7 whole square. Now the factors of x minus 7 is repeating two times so the structure is a over x minus 7 plus b over x minus 7 whole square. See no other structure of the partial fraction will work. It is always unique. So 3x minus 10 divided by x minus 7 whole square is there the first term so you multiply with x minus 7 whole square on the left and on the right when you multiply on the left you will get 3x minus 10 on the right hand side let's look at the a part a divided by 
bracket into bracket square. So one bracket will cancel. You will be left with one bracket which is a into x minus 7. Now here this square will cancel with this square. Bracket square will get cancelled. So b will be left alone. So your equation is 3x minus 10 equal to a into x minus 7 plus b. Now you have to eliminate a. How do you eliminate? Take this x minus 7, put it equal to 0. The root is 7. 7 minus 7 is 0. Just remember that. Just note that. Now 3x minus 10 equal to a into x minus 7 plus b. So put x equal to 7. 7 minus 7 is 0. So a has been eliminated. Then you are left with b alone here on the right hand side. 0 plus b is equal to b. On the left hand side you have 3 into 7. 3x minus 10. 3 into 7 minus 10. 21 minus 10 is 11. So b 11 equal to b. b equal to 11. Now you have to choose a simple value of x for x such as x equal to 0 or 1. Something like that you can choose. So, you have 3x minus 10 equal to a into x minus 7 plus b. Now, copy the value of b which is 11 here. x is equal to 0. So, 0 minus 7 is minus 7. So, you have minus 7a plus 11. And on the left hand side, you have 3 into 0 minus 10. 0 minus 10 which is minus 10. So, minus 10 equal to minus 7a plus 11. Take this 11 on the left hand side. You will get minus 10 minus 11 which is minus 21 it is minus 7a so divide by minus you will get minus 21 divided by minus 7 equal to 3. Finally we have the partial fractions and the expression is 3x minus 10 divided by x minus 7 whole square equal to 3 divided by x minus 7 plus 11 divided by x minus 7 whole square. Now we have to integrate your main exercise is to integrate. Your first integrand is 3 over x minus 7. The second is 11 over x minus 7 whole square. So when you have two things, try to do them one at a time. It will work almost all the time. So keep 3 on the left. Not on the left, outside the integral. You have 1 over x minus 7 dx. And the answer is logarithm natural absolute value x minus 7 and 3 is outside. On the left. Second integral is 11 will come out. You have 1 over x minus 7 whole square. We'll again use the formula and get minus 1 over x minus 7. 11 into minus 1 is minus 11 and your answer is minus 11 over x minus 7 plus c. You try to remember these two formulae which will be used in this chapter many times and also you should remember how we got this formula using substitution. This is very important, but sometimes it is difficult to remember many formulae, but you should remember your substitution procedure to get these integration formulae. Then the second thing is, let's look at the table once again. If you have a linear factor divided by two non-repeating linear factors, then the structure is a over x plus a plus b over x plus b. If the linear factors are repeating two times which is then you have to do a over x plus a plus b over x plus a whole square. The same idea is carried out when the linear factors are repeating three times or you have three independent linear non-repeating linear factors. You can have other combinations also. You can have four factors, two are repeating, two are not repeating. And there are many other combinations which we'll discuss some other time, inshallah, but not today. Thank you. See you in the class soon.